back. I hope you had a chance to populate those lists in your Before You Niche Trello board. That's going to be not only necessary in the next lesson when we actually build your niche statement, but also going forward whenever you're sitting down to write messaging and copy. Both that board and the review mining board that we're going to build in this lesson. So this lesson is a similar format, but from a different perspective. See, the problem is quite simply that you're not your prospect. So when we get to the final step in creating a niche, which, which revolves around the problems that you solve or the results that you deliver, you have a completely different perspective towards your brand than your prospects do. Which just means you shouldn't expect what's inside your head to be the reality of what your prospects are feeling. So we're going to ignore what we think our market wants and instead of deciding what we think our prospects problems are and what we think their agitations are, we're going to actually go and find out in their own words. And then all the decisions we make, the problems we decide to solve, uh, the decisions we make around our brand and business, all of our communications, whether it's uh, product descriptions, key messages, headlines, hooks, whatever, all of that will be developed from a foundation instead of our own potentially misguided perceptions. So let's step outside of our brand for a moment and I wanna show you what you can find out about your audience. There is a Trello board linked at the bottom of this lesson which you can grab in a minute, but I just wanna go through it first and show you how it works. Just before we get going though, I wanna give a shout out to Joanna at Copy Hackers. That's the person who developed this process, at least I think she developed it, I certainly learned it from her. Now, she does hers in a piece of software that she developed for copywriting called Air Story. And I just wanna mention that in case anyone here has seen Joanna's version of this and is wondering why I'm doing this in Trello instead. And the reason is, you're gonna perform a version of this exercise as part of your brand sprint work with clients. And when we get to the exercise, which we do on day three of the brand sprint, we need to copy entire lists between boards as part of the workflow. So just in case anyone has seen this exercise using AirStory and was wondering, that's why we're using Trello. If you wanna get yourself a copy of AirStory, I'll put a link in the bottom of this lesson. It's free, it's fantastic for the copywriting use of this exercise, just not so much for the brand sprint exercise, so you won't need it for brand sprints because we don't use it. Now, here's the idea behind review mining. People that are similar to your prospects are reviewing or talking about products, services, solutions, and ideas that are similar to what you're selling or offering. Now they're doing this online already. They're doing it in product reviews. They're doing it in blog posts, comments, forums, all over the place. Um, think of places like Reddit, TripAdvisor, Yelp, Amazon, Facebook, all that sort of place, all those sort of places. So your job is to go to those places and just listen to them. And the reason this works is that this lets you go out and listen to what your prospects or people who are similar to your ideal customer are saying without interrupting them, okay? So you're listening without filtering them and you don't have to worry that they're trying to impress you or trying to find a suitable answer like they do in interviews or in surveys. So all that being said, let me just switch over my screen here and I'll show you what the review mining exercise looks like in Trello. Okay, so first up, you wanna do the same thing once you've clicked on that link and it opens up this board, you wanna do the same thing with this board as you did before with the Before You Niche board by making two copies, okay? So we're just gonna go over here, show menu, more, copy board, and we will call this review mining. Uh, you can even call it my brand in there if you want. And this one, of course, we will put in the my brand name team. Click create and then do the exact same thing again. Okay, more copy board, except this one we're going to call review mining template. And we're going to put that in our Brand Sprint Academy templates team for safekeeping. Close out of the menu click back on home so you can head back over here to your actual boards, go into your my brand name team and select the review mining my brand board that we just created, okay? So now we've got those two copies, everything's protected, we've got our template protected and we've got the one that we're working on specifically for our brand open. Now when you first open it, I don't want you to worry about any of the other lists except for the raw material list, this, this first list here in the template. This is the only one that we're gonna talk about right now. 
because we're gonna fill that raw material list rapidly without overanalyzing, okay? When we've got the raw material list filled, then we'll slow down things and we'll categorize the info. So raw material, what are we looking for and where do we get it from? Well, it's important to have an idea of the types of things we're looking for before we just jump in and start copying and pasting reviews. So the way this exercise works is we're following the problem agitation solution format, okay? So we're looking for how people describe the problem they're having, the agitations around either the problem or the lack of solution, and then the solution itself. And don't worry about the breakdown of the solution yet, just keep the problem agitation solution framework in mind as you're mining these reviews. So here's where I always look for raw material and where I recommend that you start. First place, Amazon, every time. Always. There are books written on pretty much every subject ever, and it's your job to find the books that relate to the same things your prospects are looking for, okay? Let me give you an example. I'm switch over here to Amazon. So, I have a client who's a, a, a diabetic nutritionist, right? So I'll go into Amazon, and I'll click the drop down here, and I'll select books, and then I'm just gonna type in diabetes. Simple as that. Click search. And what you're looking for is any book on the subject with more than 100 reviews, preferably. That doesn't mean that you're gonna ignore any books with fewer reviews if they're your only choice, but we wanna make this as easy on ourselves as possible. So if we've got books with more than 100 reviews, go there first, and if there are enough of them, you don't need to venture past those ones with lots of reviews. So just click on the number of reviews and then go to the, go to the review section. What I typically do is just click the little drop down there and I'll go to the one star reviews. So we wanna look at one, two, and three star reviews. Why? Well, because if people are taking the extra time to think about adjusting the stars, then they're being more critical and they're likely being more honest with their experience, okay? So start with one and two, because those people are usually pretty problem focused, okay? Now I'll show you in a minute what we do with the information so that we can use it in the rest of that board, but I just wanna continue with where to find the stuff first, and then we'll go into that stuff in a second. So as an example of this one star review here, if we look at this, 1% useful, 4% humor, etc. that's pretty cold. Uh, the idea that the spirit is willing, da 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 da. Fung certainly has a God complex, mocking and insulting the words of Jesus Christ. Watch and pray, wow, this guy is really upset. Like all mockers, fun, fun comes full circle. Um, okay, so this is unlikely to be useful for us because the reviewer is being critical of the author and not necessarily the content. I mean, he's being critical of the content by extension, but his criticisms here are about the author. There's not really gonna be much good in there for us if we're reviewing a client's product that's related to that, to, to that uh, subject, okay? Let's look at the next one. Useless book for anyone wanting answers. <laughs> I've read a lot of books on pre-diabetes, gluten, insulin, and uh, This book, I read it through looking for his aha moment with something new to be shared, but I couldn't find it anywhere. A lot of information, but none of it new or life-changing. Okay, again, really not a lot here that we could use. Uh, new range. Everyone is into so intermittent fasting to lose weight. Okay, that might be valuable. Uh, this has just become the new solution to our eating and being obese problems. So if you, for, for example, if you had a product related to the diabetes industry that had nothing to do with intermittent fasting, or even better, if your client's product used intermittent fasting as what it was against in the world, then stuff like this might be valuable. But for the most part, this doesn't feel like a very valuable uh, review. Again, they're just pretty critical of the author. So let me go back and we'll try the next one. So mastering diabetes, 144. Obviously there are fewer uh, reviews there, but that's okay. Still over a hundred. Click on the one stars. Okay. I followed diabetes research and practices for many years as a healthcare provider for diabetic patients, da 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 da. Uh, okay, this was and still is the era of pushing a high carb and low fat diet with all of its bad effects on the diabetic and non-diabetic population. That's gold, that is pure gold. That's exactly what's wrong with the existing reality in the customer's own words, okay? So we would copy that and we would mine that as a review. 
Again, I'm not gonna show you how we do that just yet. I just wanna show you, go through and show you where else you find these reviews first. So step one is raw material, okay? So that's just how, how you would look through Amazon looking for stuff, looking for reviews that were worth mining. But Amazon is only one channel. Again, I always start there because it is rife with really good stuff. But there's a few other places that I do go every single time. So next, I'll typically head for Facebook. And you have a few choices here. You can go for pages or groups. You can join the groups if you need to. Uh, I had a brief look before this video. Uh, most of the groups require approval to join, which is obviously we don't have time for that during this video. So I'm just gonna bring this up. This is my client uh, who is a diabetic nutritionist. So again, you go into the private group and you would just go through here and look in the discussion format. Uh, I saw my doc yesterday and I lost another two pounds on top of the 50 pounds, 46 more to go. So that's all pretty good news. None of that's talking about the problem. We can, we can pretty much ignore that. Keep scrolling down. Uh, linked articles I don't bother with. Uh, we're just looking for in the client's own words. Uh, having oral surgery, wondering if anyone has any ideas for liquid foods, protein drinks, etc. I might copy that if I'm going through this process looking for content ideas, for content that my audience wants to learn about. Uh, might be helpful while I'm recovering. See, that's not really diabetes, that's specifically related to the fact that he's having teeth pulled. So I probably wouldn't take that as an, uh, an overarching review mining exercise for the brand, okay? Uh, blood sugar or health goals coming up. I wanna lose another 10 pounds. Bring my A1C down to 5.1. I've crept up with a K. I've crept up to six over this past year. Okay, so I might copy that and then put that in my, in my review mining uh, document as well because the creeping up A1C is a very legitimate concern for both type one and type two diabetics. Uh, so again, in their own words, uh, if you were to take that from your own head, you might say something like, okay, so your A1C has been increasing. And yes, it's possible that diabetics would use those terms, but we know 100% that a diabetic would say my A1C has crept up. And often when we're talking sales copy and we're talk when we're talking uh, brand understanding, it's those little nuances that make the difference. Okay, so that's, that's Facebook. Uh, again, if you wanna go through the reviews tab, if we were looking at a page here, you could go through the reviews tab and you could look at the reviews. Again, same process. Look for the more critical stuff where people have actually given it some real thought. Uh, next place, so the next place I am always going to go is Medium. Now you can search under, under publications, but typically I just search under Medium in general. And because it can be a little tricky to find stuff just by doing a Medium search, I'll go to Google and then in the search bar, I'll just type diabetes and then I'll use the search parameter site, so site colon medium.com. That's gonna return every, every uh, uh, iteration of diabetes found on medium.com. Obviously the beauty of medi medium being a massive blog is that all of their URLs are gonna start with medium.com. I mean, there are ways to, to brand the URL, so you might miss some, but in this process, this is fine. So that's what I did here, and I, and I deliberately chose this one, and I'll show you why in just a second. The, re the reason we're looking in medium, or what we're looking for in medium is, uh, an article or a post which has the uh, problem, promise, myth style framework in the first few paragraphs. So a lot of the time when you're on Medium, you might find someone, in, in a very rare case, you might find someone bitching about a problem that can give you some pure gold. But most of the time, Medium's kind of just like a blog. It's people just publishing their thoughts so that they can build credibility, usually to drive you to their product offer offline. So when we look at these articles, if we can find the way they're writing the variation of the problem, promise, myth framework in the opening of their article, typically that writing was driven by this style of research. So we're just using the research they've already done and then taking their, their uh, decisions from that and using that in our review mining, okay? They'll, uh, they'll often talk about the frustrations or the agitations they're feeling around those problems. That's even better. The better and more well-researched the article, the more bang on those insights will be. However, you will probably need to weed through a lot of junk 
to find the gold, especially when you're dealing with commodity thinkers, the types that just regurgitate what they think they know, instead of going to the source in an exercise like this and actually finding out, okay? So let's have a quick look at this article. Uh, it is, a, it is a, uh, a review of What the Health, um, which is a documentary about diabetes. And there's not a great deal. There's certainly not the, the, the problem, promise, myth opening that I was hoping for. But the reason that I, I, I opened it anyway is because some of this stuff is very controversial, okay? Uh, sugar does not cause type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is not caused by sugar. This stuff's very controversial. And when we get into building a brand, your client's brand part of what's going to give the messaging strength is what they stand against. Now, one of the best ways to stand against something is controversy. So that's why I open this one up. Second reason I open this one up is because it's got what we really want, which is a number of responses. Medium seems to be having some slow traction in gaining, uh, gaining people using it as a place to have conversations in these responses. So you may need to go through a number of Medium posts before you find anything with uh, at, at least some responses, some comments that you can mine. But this is where you're gonna get the same stuff as you get in those book reviews, which is that really in the, in the client's or in the prospect's own words, what they think, okay? So this is where the audience is chiming in. The way most vegans write about omnivores seems to say that we only eat meats and dairy, eggs, etc., which is plainly not true. Uh, we eat these and da 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 da. Okay, so he's a little unhappy. There might be more in this. Um, the one about sugary sodas was comparing sugary sodas with artificially sweetened sodas, and yes, he's shown that both types of sweetness can cause. The one about fat. So I guess uh, this particular review, you would need to have a good idea of what the documentary said before you would really be able to dissect it. Uh, this documentary is the biggest joke, okay. Uh, seems we have a failure to understand the process of becoming a diabetic and experience. I have first-hand experience and knowledge of, so this is likely gonna be good because they're speaking from a position of authority and they seem to be willing to speak. 16 years ago, I was diagnosed, lived with that for 15 years, watched my numbers get worse. Okay, watched my numbers get worse every year. That's a description of the problem. Uh, tried this and that, I did a great job of reading and learning, looked at research, several things at once. Cut out all grain products, I cut out all sugars. I also began exercising late in the day, I did another walk. Okay, so that's what they did. That's not 100% valuable, but this is what happened. This is where it's going to start to get really valuable. The results over the course of a year were dramatic. I dropped 50 pounds, my morning blood sugar went down, my A1C dropped, so I crept up for rising, dropped for lowering, in their words. My lipid panel is now uh, blood sugar, lipid panel, I guess, uh, right in the middle of the diabetes world. If you're a type one more likely, this stuff's gonna make more sense to you. I wouldn't use that for messaging because you wanna talk to pre-diabetic, you wanna talk to diabetic type two, you wanna talk to diabetic type one, and you want to talk to people who care for diabetics. So there's really, there's four, four specific audiences looking for diabetes information. Uh, next year, it will be, I will be 64 and I expect all my numbers to be even better. Yeah, so there's some good stuff in here that you could copy. Now, I'll get into more details in just a second, but you don't need to read this stuff word for word. Essentially, what you're looking for is, is there stuff in here that's valuable? And if so, copy it all. And I'll show you what to do with it shortly. So that's medium. And that's the comment section, which is really where you're going to find uh, all the gold. And the last place that I'm always looking when I'm mining reviews is competitors' websites. So not necessarily for what they write, but for what their customers write. So we want to look at competitors' websites for testimonials and reviews. But just accept that the competitor was able to decide who posted the review and how it reads. So they're always going to be biased. You can easily reverse engineer a happy testimonial though to find the pain point that the client was suffering from in the beginning. Most of the time they'll actually write it. It'll be something like, for years we struggled, struggled with X and then we found Y company and they solved everything, right? So we struggled with X, that's what they're looking, we're looking for for the review mining in their words. And there are certainly other places you can look. You can look at places like Yelp. Uh, you can look at Reddit. You can look at places like that. It's going to depend on your client's industry. So you may re rely more on those when you run this for your clients. But for now, these are the places I recommend starting. So what do you do with this information when you find a review that you want to mine? Here's the process. 
Let me just click back over here to my uh, Trello board. So you're gonna make a new card in the raw material list and then we're gonna add a title of where the stuff came from. So what you type on the new card will become the title, but you can also just open the card. So for example, if I do this here, let me just copy a title so that I can show you how this works. I'll bring this over here and I'll create another card and bang in the title. So what you first type in when you make a new card becomes the title of the card. But you can also open this at any time and edit the title up here. So either way you want to do your title is fine. So let me just go through how you do these titles first because this is uh, this is vitally important for when we come back and we, and we use this stuff later on and we make sure this stuff remains current. So here's an example. This is a, obviously a medium post. So the title is um, type followed by title and or website followed by author followed by company represented uh, that the author represents okay so in this case medium post that's the type add the dash how to do cool stuff that's the title of the medium post uh, and I'll show you the difference in website posts in a second add the dash John Johnson Cool Stuff R Us. That's just the name and the company of the author, okay? So that's how you do it for a medium post. Let's do another one. This is for, uh, for example, let's do one for a testimonial. So again, add another card. Pop it open. So, testimonial, that's the type. So you always know what type of review you're looking at. Add the dash competitivesite.com slash page. So that's the URL of the website where it's located. If you don't want to put the URL there or if you don't necessarily have the URL, you can just, like if you forgot to copy it, you can just put in the name of the website like uh, such and such a competitor site, whatever. Add the dash. Gary Smith, we do things LLC. Obviously I made these up. <laughs> this is the name and the uh, uh, the company of the testimonial writer. Again, this is just so that we know where it came from. This is gonna give us context when we actually use these in our both our review mining and our branding uh, exercises. Let's do another one. Facebook post, okay. Uh, sorry, Facebook review. That's the type, add the dash. Facebook page name, again, you could use the URL of the name if you like, or just the name of the page. Stanley Green, Stanco, okay? It's pretty easy stuff, but we need to follow the exact same format here because we're gonna be referring back to this and we need to have that context. Next one, this is what an Amazon review looks like. Amazon review, that's the type, book or product name. So, if you get a client who has a product category that exists on Amazon, then obviously you can do product reviews as well as book reviews. So you'd probably want to do those separately. In that case, under type, I would have Amazon book review or Amazon product review, and then the book or the product name, etc. cetera. Uh, Rebecca Reader, Read for Life Incorporated, um, name and company of the reviewer. And then finally, actually not finally, but this is one that you want to look at if you're doing books in physical format. So let's say you're reading a book, and you come across some stuff for your client. I happen to do a lot of reading when I'm researching a client's brand. Uh, so if you find something in a physical book or in, a, in a, uh, an ebook e or anything like that, excerpt from book, that's the type. Again, that gives us context. Book title, page number, obviously the page number is vital. You can even put a subhead or a paragraph number if you need to. And then the book author is pretty obvious. Uh, next one, website review. So, website review, that's the type. CompetitiveSite.com and page if you need to. Uh, you can also use the page, the, the site name. Uh, Jared Klenning, name of the reviewer. Now you can see from this last example, if there's no associated company, just leave it blank, it's fine. Uh, the only reason that we put as much detail in there as possible is because we want as much context as possible when we come back to use this. Because obviously you see, this is a two-step process. Step one is gathering material. You're gonna forget your early, early material by the time you finished gathering material. So as much context as we have here, the, the easier you'll make it on yourself later on. So, now just a quick note, there is a difference between a website review 
and a testimonial. Even though both of them are gonna be found on competitors' websites, the author's motivations are slightly different. So a testimonial is typically more biased to the positive, while a review can be more honest, all right? So that's the title of the raw material card. Now we wanna add the actual raw material to the card. So to do that, you just copy the whole block of text that you wanna mine. Remember I said earlier, you scan it, you find out if there's anything in there that's useful, and if there is, copy the lot, okay? So you're gonna copy the whole block of text that you wanna mine, and when you copy it, make sure to keep the date and other details so you can return to the raw material if you ever need to on the site where you found it. So this is an example that I actually copied earlier. This is from a real Amazon review from our industry. Don't worry about the, the mismatch from the title example. I'm just gonna use one of these that I've already done to demonstrate. So let me just copy this. Okay, Amazon review, and then you're just gonna pop the entire block of text into the description section of your Trello card, okay? So we're now on the back of the card, we opened the card, and then we're putting the entire review into the description section. And then finally, you just wanna copy the direct link to that review into the comment section down here, okay? Under activity, uh, you don't need to watch that, click save. So now we've got the exact URL, so we can jump straight back to it, and we've got the, the, the block of the entire review that we're mining. Don't forget to click save. Trello can sometimes be a little bit finicky with not auto-saving stuff, so protect yourself. Just click save at every chance you have, and when you're finished, you'll have something that looks like this, okay? So that's for every single raw material card that you create. It feels like a lot of work, right, when you're doing this. You feel like this is never gonna end. But when you, when you come back to this, when you need to use this, you're going to thank yourself for all of the effort that you put in and you're gonna have a gold mine of market real information for you to use for your brand and communications or when we do this during the sprint for your client's brand and uh, your client's communications, okay? So the logical next question, how much raw material do you need? Well, I like to spend between 20 minutes and an hour doing review mining for raw material. And you'll decide how much of that time you need based on how easily you're turning up good stuff, right? Because some industries are harder than others to find book review, books or reviews on. In that case, you're gonna spend a little bit longer. For some industries though, like diabetes, the perfect client here, it is super easy. You can rocket through this in 20 minutes and you can get loads of good stuff. It's also something that gets easier and more enjoyable the more you do it. You saw how humorous some of those one-star reviews are. Uh, you can really enjoy yourself while you're doing this. So this shouldn't be thought of as a chore. It is just one part of the process, okay? So in the beginning, give yourself plenty of time. Now, I'm gonna give you two quick tips to help you approach this, and then I'm gonna sign off this video before it gets ridiculously long, uh, and we'll come back to what to do with the raw material in the next video, okay? So first important tip. The biggest mindset shift that you're gonna to have to deal with when you're doing review mining is getting past the idea that we're talking about books and products that are separate from yours. You're not gonna find your service reviewed on Amazon, okay? What you're gonna find is the thing that replaces your service or that is a shortcut to the result for, uh, for, for your prospects. So we wanna look at books that are hired for the job that your service would otherwise be hired for. So for example, let's say you're a project management firm. If your prospect is trying to hire you or someone for project management, then you'd look at Amazon reviews for books on how they could do project management for themselves, okay? So the book is being hired to do the job you would otherwise be hired for. Different market, of course. Someone who could or would do it themselves, it's not gonna be your ideal prospect. But the language that you'll see is just as useful for your service as it is for the book, okay? So that's how you need to approach this and how you get past that problem of how do I find re reviews for my service, right? Well, you won't. You'll find reviews for books that are hired to do what your service would otherwise be hired for. And the second tip that, that, that I wanna give is actually a response to the first question that my clients always ask when I show them how to perform this, which is how much of the review should I take? I've already touched on this. This is where my process differs substantially from the original copy hackers process that I learnt. I suggest taking the entire review or testimonial or whatever. Now, within reason, if there's three lines of, thanks for this, I'll try this tomorrow, or junk like that, don't take that part. But for the most part, 
I'll take everything. And that's specifically because I go into a little bit more detail in the next step of categorizing the raw material and then splitting it into logical sections. So don't get hung up trying to read every word just so that you can get the valuable stuff. For the raw material step, take everything, just take the lot. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up here so that it is still watchable without needing like stenographers and notebooks. And I'll come back to what we do with the raw material in the next video. So go ahead, spend some time, again, between 20 minutes and an hour, gathering some raw material. And then I'll see you in the next video for the next steps. <laughs>